Welcome to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arntzen, and today I'm joined by Grace Hall, Zoe Poppingay, Issa Shake. Our topic today is something that has touched us all personally, and that is the SATs. But before we get into it, let's see what people around Davis have to say about it. Um, how do you feel about SAT and ACT and those standardized tests alike? And um, if you could think of a solution, um, what would they be? I think that though the SAT and the ACT show a lot of ability to strategize and pace yourself and stuff like that and those types of skills you'll need later, I don't think that the weight that we put on them is necessary because in reality it's not really a test of our knowledge, it's a test of, like I said, our strategy and there's a lot of other ways we could evaluate that. Um, I think a solution for that would to be... I don't know, maybe figure out more ways to implement programs where we could be tested on a smaller scale as opposed to putting so much weight on our future on such scores like that. I don't know. I think it's based, like, I guess if you're going off, like, the SAT, it's more on, like, a person's just, like, flat out, like, intellect versus, like, who they are as a student. Because, feel... like, really lazy people who have, like, not as great grades, if they have, like, a really good SAT score, they can get into a better college. Yeah, I also don't feel like the SAT is like that great of like a judge for how smart somebody is because it kind of just like judges you on if you're a good test taker not how like how smart you are like you might just like completely fra get frazzled like in the test and like you just suck during it and then afterwards you know everything so yeah I don't really like SATs I get frazzled um, do you guys think there are any um, substitutes or anything, any other better forms of evaluation that the colleges could take? I don't know what would be better. I mean, just regular, like everybody already has tests in their, like their subjects and get their transcripts so like you know how they like progress over time. So why do you need like a standardized test at the end? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, like you know how they have like interviews for like really elite colleges like maybe if they had that for mm -hmm. everyone yeah just like get to know people more than like their paper I think what's most important uh, is uh, the enthusiasm of a student uh, and uh, their participation in in projects and the local community and if you have somebody that is an active learner then they should be let in uh, SIT is kind of uh, putting things at a distance that is unnecessary and probably selects out some people that shouldn't be selected out. Um, some people say that um, they really like the SATs because they don't evaluate you on your um, social or political standing, um, but other people say that um, college, how people are accepted into college should be more dimensional than just sports. Um, what do you have to say about uh, that? I, well, I, I agree with that, and uh, I think I question the I question uh, the SIT itself. I think that if if people are learning skills and they're uh, uh, doing their best to make a positive contribution to other human beings, that they should be given a chance. The SATs are, are useful because they allow students who don't do well academically in school to basically prove they have kept capacity to, to grow in a different environment. So they're useful in that regard. But of course, there's always, we need to have multiple ways of evaluating students. Their they're, they're on, they're on academic record should be also considered. It's, it's too simple to just look at a score and reduce a human being to one score. People are very different in different varieties. And, and the different different skill sets and different metrics are used. For example, social skills, there's no metric for social skills, and there's no metric for artistic skills on the SAT. So we need different ways of evaluating our, our students to get into college. I think there's a lot of uh, very interesting opinions. I think generally the opinion was that they weren't great. Um, well, or in like more in the middle of obviously they uh, like can't tell everything. But what did you guys think about it? I took the SAT the end of my junior year, I'm a senior now, and my experience of taking the test was okay. I'm not someone who personally does amazing on test. I've grown up learning really good presentation skills and collaboration and more being judged meritly on subjects like that instead of specifically tests. So taking the test was a little bit different. Um, I actually had to drive because I signed up late. And then I got to the test and it was at a different school so I was already kind of frazzled. I didn't know anybody there. 
I was really nervous, and then again, adding on, I'm not the best test taker. Um, the experience of taking the test was okay, but then I got my grade back, and it was a little shattering because some of the colleges I wanted to go to, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to meet their standards. So I think that it's difficult sometimes for individuals like myself who don't do as well testing, knowing that I could do better than that, and that grade or number doesn't exactly represent me. Um, so, generally in school, I am not the, I'm not a shining star student. There are some classes where I really don't think that that grade reflects how much I actually understand the class or how much I, sometimes even how, I, how much I enjoy that class or just my general knowledge overall. And so, taking the SAT was actually very refreshing because it wasn't filled with complex calculus questions or really intricate grammar questions, it was, it was a little, um, it showed you general knowledge. And so um, I actually did pretty okay in the SAT and I really think that that's what's going to save me a lot of my college applications because it's not about um, how much I know about this detailed part of physics. It's about how I know, how I know everything in general. And, um, while I do think that there are some ways that the SAT could be improved, it has, it, I, I really think that it's going to help me personally a lot, but that's my individual story. Yeah, when you have something as widespread, as um, commonplace in the high school experience as an SAT, there's definitely going to be like an entire system set around, I mean, game is kind of the wrong word, but to game the test, right? So there are camps, curriculums, books, um, people who make their careers make tons and tons of money off of getting parents to pay um, to pay them to get their student ready for the test. Um, and so although I, I think from Zoe's description, it, it, it's a good way to gain general knowledge. Um, I do think that the way that this, the college board and its tests have become such an established thing uh, in our high school experience, there's been an entire market created around um, doing well on the test, even if you don't know the stuff, even if you are not a great student. Um, and then there's this whole thing of, there are people who have terrible transcripts, um, either because they don't care about their work or they have some trouble, um, and then they'll have good and good SAT scores, or there'll be 4.0 students who put in tons and tons of work, uh, students that colleges would, um, be, would be good to have, um, and yet they're not great with tests. So there's, um, I mean, I've, I've taken the PSAT and I got a pretty good score um, but I think there are people who are much more capable than me who got lower scores just because they haven't had that experience um, taking that many tests. In, in my elementary school, we did tons of tests. Um, I remember actually liking taking the star tests <laughs> in elementary school. Um, but I think definitely when we always, when we rely, I, I, colleges are doing a better job at this, but when we start to rely on things like an, ST, like an SA, SAT in college admissions, um, there, there are issues. There's going to be a market set up around trying to get around it. There's going to be um, factors that the SAT can't gauge, like that guy was talking about. I mean, colleges do look at stuff outside. They do look at community service and at extracurriculars and stuff like that. Um, it's just that there's, it's a given that there are going to be issues with something like that. Yeah, I think that the SAT is a very specific type of knowledge that not everyone's going to be good at. Like that, I think that's like not everyone's going to be great at taking the SAT because maybe they're a bad test taker. Maybe that specific aspect of what the SAT is uh, graded on is just not something that you excel at. But I think uh, I even though I didn't get I didn't get a great score on the SAT, I think that it's still important because it has a general baseline for everyone to use. Because I'm confident that the uh, education I got is easier than some schools, harder than others, so that my performance uh, against someone who went to a really elite private school, if we had the same GPA, we probably don't have exactly the same uh, difficulty of classes that we took or uh, rigor of course load. So I think colleges are doing a much better job at having a more holistic approach at admissions. So I think that that, that even if you don't do well in the SATs, that you, there's still different aspects of your application that can shine through. So I think that um, as long as SATs aren't the main aspect that people are graded on, if like there's more variety in how colleges look at an applicant, then I, I think the SATs are fine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's also not really even a, um, 
um, someone in the interviews was talking about how it doesn't measure your artistic skill or your social skills. I think it, it, it really kind of goes beyond that because there are, in, in a college application, if you are applying to major in art, they will often ask for a portfolio and so in a way that solves the problem. It also just doesn't evaluate um, your enthusiasm to be at that school or your passion for whatever you're going for. Um, it just analyzes your general, it, really, it just analyzes your general knowledge and I think that's a, a bit of a cold statistic to have, especially for something as important as college because a person is more than just a couple of scores and a GPA. That person has um, a political standpoint, um, so, social views, um, maybe they're a bit conservative, maybe they're a bit liberal, but they're much more than that score. And so I think that some colleges and lots of people hold the SAT a little bit more than it's actually worth. Yeah, I think in any sort of admission process, you're not going to get the whole student. It's so hard to get a person uh, and translate it into like a 2D application. Like that's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. And I think what was brought up that interviews were definitely a good point. And I think that interviews are definitely a better way to gauge someone. Although I do, I do know people that are just like aren't good at that sort of thing. So I think that also has its flaws. And I, every aspect of the application appeals to a different type of person. But I also realized that interviews are really hard to do. Like there's so many people applying to college that you just, you couldn't possibly interview them all. Like you couldn't get someone to just interview every single applicant. So I think um, that would be the, the easiest and most fair choice in my opinion. But I, I think it's a thing that would not I think work. anything that goes into a college, the, people are, there are some people who have the resources or are really good at, um, contorting themselves, contorting their profile to be a perfect um, applicant, right? So you can be uh, a jerk socially, but in that interview you show up and like be awesome. You can, um, you can not have maybe the best extracurriculars, but during high school, you know, your, your parents pay for all of this training, yada, yada. So there's definitely going to be people who have the resources or are just personally really good at and really motivated to contort themselves towards that profile that a college is looking for. And then there will be people who don't want to spend their entire lives getting ready for college for four years. Um, and that's fine. But when, when we see people all clamoring to get into, I mean, nobody is going to apply to um, Sac State and be so obsessive. Um, but when you see this culture of people obsessively applying to Yale, Harvard, Georgetown, um, even UC Davis, um, there will be this kind of yoga to get to the right pose that UC Davis is looking for. Um, and then there's this larger thing of the culture around stuff like SATs, around standardized testing, which is the idea that, uh, I mean, I'm sure people hear this from in the majority of schools from the first year of freshman year is that you should go to college, you need to go to college. Uh, and although that's true for a ton of people, it's not the case for everybody. We as a society have um, devalued work at good paying, I mean, it's not like you have to work a minimum wage job if you're not going to college. There are tons and tons of good jobs. Um, I know we look down on plumbers, but plumbers can make tons and tons of money um, without having to go to college. And college is just, not everybody needs to go to school for all those years, because what we, what we do is we set people up for failure. Throughout high school, you're working to get college, 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 college. Uh, you get tons and, that's why we see so many people go to college and leave after the first couple of semesters. Um, which is, uh, we set people up only for college and then they have, um, they have jobs that they don't like and they don't have a complete diploma, they have a couple of units in the bank. Um, and they're just not happy and that's why I think we kind of need to take the emphasis off college for everybody, that one size fits all approach, which has been such a problem in our education for such a long time. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think college is good for some people and is not good for others. Like, if you have no idea what you want to do in your life, college might not be the right choice for you immediately. Like, maybe you want to take a gap year. Maybe you want to go to community college. Maybe you don't want to go to college. I think the emphasis that everyone needs to go to college is a, a really harmful mindset uh, because it's not right for everyone. And I, I, I think it's it's getting more and more progressive. As If you look through history, a college education has different values throughout 
like in the beginning it was a lot more like prestigious to have a college education but now it's kind of like the starting block and even then it's like we went to college but you don't have 10 years of experience like to get into this relatively yeah, starting yeah, every, level job. Graduate school is becoming like a requisite every, yeah. year, every decade yeah, just it's just becoming harder. more and more college you have to have a not just an associate's but a bachelor's you just have to yeah. have a master's and you it, have to have a PhD um, it's just becoming more and more of a um, not just a status thing, but like a requirement. You should have all this college with um, all this education that you're not necessarily going to need. Not to mention, it's also priced as a luxury. It's like, socially, it's like you're kind of required, but then it's like 70 grand a year for some of the top schools, top schools in the U.S. And it's, yeah, exactly, you're set up to fail. It's yeah. I think uh, we talked a lot of about a lot of good and interesting topics today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I think this is personally, I think it's just going to get worse um, and more <laughs> severe uh, the college admission process as it gets more selective every year. But uh, thank you again for joining me, and come join us next week. <laughs>